Welcome to the Mistress Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up, building, and converting Gothic City runes from Pegasus Hobbies for our gaming table. Hello and welcome back. All right, this is what we're going to build here. This is from Pegasus Hobbies and it's Gothic City Ruins. All right, great for wargaming terrain. Again, another project for my gaming table. We're going to start with some modeling paste from Liquid Text. And it's a pretty easy construction to put together. Gaps are minimal, but they're there. There are these holes uh, right along the side that I kind of just filled up with this putty here and try to make even as even as possible. And the idea was to cover up these holes because I didn't want these holes in there, so I had to have an idea of what I wanted to put in there. So just, you know, brainstorming what I can do. First, I just wanted to level it out and make it even, so this way it just looks like a piece of the brick. Uh, and to do that, it's easy. All you have to do is put it, put out that modeling paste in and just wipe it as, as evenly as possible within the crevices. Now, what you can do is take some kind of spatula and kind of like wipe it over if you want to uh, as well, and that'll even it out. But just make sure you're filling up the hole completely. Um, well, I thought of this idea of taking Citadel skulls. What you could do is any skulls, really, but I like the Citadel skulls. And what I was gonna do is gonna insert them inside these holes like this. So, filling it up with modeling paste and then putting these skulls on the side, I thought it would be a, a really neat way in order to, you know, really make the building stand out. Remember, it's just gothic runes, but I didn't want it just to be gothic rooms. I wanted to put that 40K spin on it since it's going to be on my 40K table or, you know, even, even, even uh, Age of Sigmar might be able to go in there as well. All right, so I'm using perfect plastic putty and that's what I use to actually seal up any gaps. You see the before and there's the after. You see um, uh, the skulls look great recessed in there, but the tops of the buildings also have, you know, any of that perfect plastic putty wherever you need um, just, to, just to even up any kind of gaps or any kind of lines that you do not, do not like. So there it is. Um, Alrighty, uh, next up we're going to take this uh, lamppost that I got from a terrain set from 40k. Uh, again, we're going to 40k this uh, Pegasus Hobby building. So what you're going to do is I'm, I'm going to snap off uh, the round base to it and just leave the bottom uh, of the piece. So this way the round base of the pedestal will be there. So I'm just trying to figure out exactly where it's going to be. I think a 90 degree angle is a good idea for that um, particular uh, lamppost just like this and I think it really looks nice that you know something took that down and then someone just constructed a lamppost out of nowhere I don't know I just figured it added some 40k flavor to it or some kind of uh, Warhammer flavor to it that I really wanted to really want to make this stand out and be a unique piece on the table so I'm adding a lot of little kutrama, uh in order to really make it stand out and make it individual all right, next up, I knocked down a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> well, I did, but I um, just wanted to see. I got this fencing again from uh, some kind of Dark Imperium kind of set that I had uh, leftover pieces for, and I had the Aquila kind of hawk hanging out. I want to add that to it as well. Again, 40Kng this out as much as possible. And this video is as much about converting as a painting tutorial. So we're gonna do a little bit of both. I wanna have that sit right there. I think that'll look cool as well. And the good thing about having a whole bunch of bits is you can always customize just about anything. And these Pegasus Hobby Model Kits just really lend themselves to wargaming and really good stuff. I really love it. Um, and when I'm done with it, I tell people this is not a 40k model and people are like what that's not a building from 40k or and that's not a Warhammer building. I'm like, no, it's not. I converted it with a lot of little bits. So um, yeah, I'm really proud of how it came out. Now this little thing, I didn't know what to put it on. So I'll just put it on one of these towers here just to make it unique. Now I don't put it on both the towers because I want to kind of divide them. All right, so you have some skulls here. These are some human skulls. And what I'm going to do is just going to add that onto the mix again from the Citadel Skull Kit. 
And I'm gonna put bone piles everywhere. All right, here it is with all the detail on. Uh, I have that little post there. I have the railing on the top, the killer, the, the uh, kind of like, I don't know what to call that on the side. <laughs> um, it holds up the building, a um, buttress maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then I gotta add some skulls as well. All right, so after I finish doing that, what we're gonna do is gonna start off with Nautilus Blue, and blue from Badger Minotaur. Uh, I like using Badger Minotaur on most of my terrain only because the actual container in which they come in is a lot larger than all the other containers that I have of my paint. So if I have an excess of paint, I kinda wanna use it up as much as possible, and I do like the blues that they have. Plus, the Badger Minotaur stuff usually goes on pretty well with an airbrush. However, with a paintbrush, some of the paints can get finicky. This was my first set of uh, miniature paint that I ever bought was Minotaur because it is really cost effective. It is, it is there. It's the most bang for your buck in my opinion right there. Uh, if you were starting out, yeah, I would recommend this if you have an airbrush. And if you just have a paintbrush, I would go more of the Vallejo uh, line to start off with. And then you could always go into scale 75s and, and the gel medium stuff, but it takes a little bit of practice. All right, some Nautilus blue, and I'm mixed in it with dusty ground. This is a gray, uh, just to create a different tonal variation. So we have that gray mixed in with the Nautilus blue, about a 50-50%, and then you do it to taste. If you really want it to pop, then you would add more gray to it, maybe a three to one. Uh, just to really, really make it pop. But I do want to differentiate the floor from the walls. So I kind of wanted a little different color. So adding the gray there uh, really tones it down. Now I'm hitting a zenithal highlighting across just to give it uh, some flair to it, some flavor, uh, and some directionality when it comes to the light. Ultimately, I was going to go for like a sort of an underwater kind of theme. I don't know what I was going with that. I was playing with colors and well, I always wanted to do an underwater scene and I never had a chance to, so <laughs> I was just trying to do something different. Plus, I've seen a lot of blue buildings and I was just giving some streaks and having fun with it. And this is exactly what I do when I build any kind of model kit. I kind of just have fun with it and see where it leads me. All right, time for some ancient bone. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop out all of those skulls with some ancient bone from Minotaur. I have to tell you when using ancient bone from Minotaur, I have to use several coats as opposed to using bone white from uh, game color, which really makes it a lot easier. But hey, you know what? Just a couple more coats won't hurt anything. All right, just making everything pop out bright. I really want to bring out the contrast of those bones and really make it look kind of neat. Because later on when I go to go wash it with my uh, custom made wash, uh, I'm gonna make like things a little brown, a little sepia there. So, hey, and in doing that, it's gonna bring out the bones, and I really want them super light. So I'm gonna hit with the highest contrast as possible. So I'm gonna go with that warm white against the cold of the blue building, and it really has that contrast, you know, set up to 11. Um, so hitting with the bones just allows control. You see how close I'm getting? I, I lower the PSI to about 15 before hitting it at that rate. Although you can hit it a little har harder if you want to, or higher if you want to, and that is up to you, but if you go to go at a high uh, density, watch that trigger while you pull, uh, because you can spread paint and it'll just look horrendous after a while. So you just have to mist it on, uh, just slowly bringing, bringing up the color. Here's where you know your patience must persevere. Uh, good things come to those who wait, so if you have patience, you will be able to persevere and have your model looking great. If you try to rush the process, then you end up with a hot mess and then you're like, oh, I don't understand why it didn't come out this way. You gotta take the time, man. You gotta take the time, girl. You know, that's all it's about. It's about taking the time to do it right. Yes, you can do it. Take the time, do it right. You can do it, modeler. Do it tonight. All right, I, I, I don't wanna get any strikes. All right, so. <laughs> I have fun doing these videos. I love them. I love them. Uh, this is as much part of the hobby as um, as model painting. You know, just sharing this stuff with you. I think it's so cool um, that you're watching this and that you're enjoying and spending the time with here, Rob at the Miniatures Paintbrush. Okay, so enough of that. Look at the building so far. It's looking pretty cool. If you want to go for a blue building, you could just put 
just put a wash on it. Now I'd make a dark brown sepia wash. This is made by the Miniatures Paintbrush, AKA me. Uh, and all I did was some flow aid, some matte medium, some water, and some ink. The end, that's it. There's the secret. Uh, not really a secret. And I just, I didn't measure. I just like, well, this is too dark and too on the black scale. So I added more sepia. Uh, ink from FW or uh, this is a little too brown I want to darken it up a lot of drop or two of the ink uh, the black ink from FW inks and I love uh, Dollar Ronnie FW inks I really do I used to get them at my Hobby Lobby but they no longer sell them unfortunately I did uh, but fortunately I bought as many as I possibly could while they were for sale uh, I didn't get all the neon colors and stuff like that that would have been interesting uh, to play around with and that's what I do I play around with paint and I'll just try a new idea. I kind of come up with an idea. I'm like, oh, I want to try it. And I just go for it. The end. Yeah, only because there are so many models that I need to paint. Uh, my backlog is huge. So I'm not afraid to paint. Fear not the paintbrush, you know. <laughs> go for it, man. Just go for it, girl. Just do it, you know. Uh, in the worst case scenario, you can always strip it and start again. But to me, it's like, okay, so this is what I learned from doing this. And if I make a mistake, this is what I learned from the mistake. Now I know not to make that one again. So that's it. And everybody has their own style. And the only way you can find your own style is that if you try. Now I'm taking Troll Blood Base from P3 uh, Paints. Uh, that is from Privateer Press. I do like their paints. Uh, I like their colors are unique. Uh, great blue, I would say great blue uh, dry brush if you want to catch the edges. Use that Troll Blood base ironically i don't use troll blood base for my troll bloods which i have a, a, a small army of uh troll bloods you could see it on my you know initial site on the banner on top those are like the first miniatures i started painting when i got back into painting since i took a hiatus from 2002 to 2016 uh not painting so 14 years of not painting and then starting paint again I, I started painting the troll bloods and that's why they're like sort of the mascot of the channel when I put them on the banner and stuff like that although I might change that banner soon because I have a lot of space full stuff all right there it is look at with the dry brush look it looks gorgeous in my opinion now we're just going to amp the contrast up to 11. now this is to taste you can just highlight whatever it is that you want again using that troll blood base just to add some spotted highlights and you can see how it's just really bringing it up like really bringing up that contrast right there now you can go overboard and do the entire thing like that with the, tr the trail uh, troll blood base if you want to or what I did is just highlight certain areas just to add visual interest I like the dark color I wanted to keep the dark color so I did and I just wanted to highlight little areas so you see me uh, highlighting the trellises and whatnot right there uh, and definitely cool process to do uh watching it come alive uh be careful though because you don't want to put it if you're just highlighting like this spot here a spot there you don't want to make it so obvious that it was a um an airbrush so you kind of have to blend in the edges just a little bit and um in doing so just like pull away a little bit as you're spraying so this way you can get a nice little fade going on right there yep and you know highlighting is really important because this is you're telling the viewer of the piece where to look you basically okay so look here and look at this and highlight this and look at that and uh, it's all with the lighter color so you're actually telling people i want people to look at these crosses down here so i'm highlighting crosses just on the top as if the light was just catching it and there it is um, and it's super simple to do, but it has quite the dramatic effect. Your, your visual interest spikes because you say, oh, wow, there's so much to look at when honestly, there wasn't a lot of color put here. Uh, you had your Nautilus blue. You had a little bit of, gr of gray and you can use any gray. Uh, you have your troll blood base and those are three colors. Uh, of course, you have your ancient bone that I put on the bones, but you know, that's here nor there. But the building itself is only three colors um max and it's not even fully gray it's just mixed in gray so basically two colors one mixed and that's it <laughs> and it has a great tonal variation and it looks great in my opinion for a blue building that i wanted a blue building because i've never tried all right so working that the last one i did was a bone building which is interesting also i used the same kind of wash 
uh, homemade wash to do it. And I recommend that you use a homemade wash when you are doing any kind of terrain because you go through a lot of the shades very, very quickly and it gets very expensive uh, in a heartbeat. All right, so I decided to do some streaks. You see that? It looks like that old underwater theme. I'll show you what I'm doing here uh, with the highlights, just bringing it up and uh, I just run it across a little bit, just wherever I feel. And to me, it's just adding some flavor to it. That's all. <laughs> I like it. Um, well, look at all those color variations. There's a lot of them, and I wanted to put a lot of them. That's exactly, I wanted to be striking like that. And for some people, that's not their thing, but hey, I liked it. All right, some cold steel from Private Zero Press P3, and what I'm doing is I would put some flow aid with that, and what I'm going to do is edge highlight some metal pieces. So to me, this is like a building that was painted in blue and kind of got like scorched by some ice effect somehow. And just pieces of the metal starts, you know, coming off. So it's some edge highlights, sort of like, you know, it's a little bit of weathering kind of thing. So if it gets a little too messy, it's not really a big deal. And, um, uh, just using that cold steel. Again, P3 paint, so that, that uh, metallic. I usually stay to Vallejo metal color, but when it comes to terrain, I have so many metallics that I kind of just want to use up. So, you know, I'm just trying to use them up. <laughs> That's it, you know. So if I have any kind of terrain, it's going to be uh, mainly I'm going to use all the other uh, metallics and not my good uh, P, my uh, Vallejo metal, metal color. All right, time for the light. I wanted the light to be yellow, so I'm going to start out with some skull white from uh, Minotaur right there. And I'm just trying to hit just the light. Notice I'm not masking anything. This is like a speed paint to me. Uh, I think I did it in about three hours in total. And really didn't take a long time to get this effect right here. Uh, <laughs> which a lot of people are like, what? Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, it didn't take me long at all. Uh, that's because I didn't bother to mask and yeah, I just try to be as careful as I could without masking and Honestly, I don't see any white anywhere else and the light itself uh, If it's radiating it's going to have uh, Some kind of light or overlap on some of the other pieces and I was going to go crazy with the lights but I chose not to because one of the things is I do not want this to be the centerpiece of the table I want the miniatures to be the centerpiece of the table. Time for Ghost Tint Yellow from Badger Minotaur. And if you never use these things, man, over white, man, do they, woman, do they uh, glow. Like, watch it automatically turn into this yellow, bright light from just white. Look at that. And it doesn't take long at all. And it is like almost iridescently glowing. I love it. Um, I haven't, I don't have too many chances to use the Ghost Tint. So when I do have a chance to use Ghost Tin, believe me you, I am on it. <laughs> oh man, and it looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks like uh, the lamp is lit. Well, that was not very, very bright. Time for some Evil Sun Scarlet on the back. Uh, I wanted the yellow contrasting with the red because of my Space Wolves. So there, I'm just <laughs> playing favorites here. Uh, again, no masking, going through it, man. Just like, go for it, girl. All right. Uh, <laughs> just going for it. Again, speed paint, done. I'm happy with that. All right, time for the floor planks. They are wood. So I'm going to start with Bootstrap Leather by Privateer Press from P3. I really love that as a base for wood. I love that for the base for leather as well. There, I just, I love that color. It's so like rich and I don't know what it is about that color. Bootstrap Leather. I'm running low on it and it's the only paint I've ever ran too low on that and Bone White. Those are the two colors that I've ever, out of the 400 pots of paint that I have lying around here. And believe me, if you see the startup screen, you can see a rack to the left. There's another rack past that. So I have two racks of paint and a rack behind me as well. So I have three racks of paint. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of colors. I have a lot of paint. The good thing is that I let my friends come by and if they want to paint something, man, that woman, just go for it. <laughs> I have no problems. Bring your brushes though. Yeah, that's the only thing. Alrighty, so next up what I'm doing is using Intex wood, Intense Wood from Scale Color uh, and Matte Medium from Liquitex because Intense Wood 
is awesome, but it's also glossy. So I'm trying to mix that in with the matte medium to tone down the gloss a little bit. And I'm gonna hit that uh, with several layers just to bring it up. And if you have not used in Intense Wood from Scale Color, it's sorcery in a bottle. It just put it on this kind of P3 leather and it just really does look like wood. And it's pretty amazing in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can go further with it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So if you want a quick and dirty, this is quick and dirty and it looks great in my opinion. Oh, well, well, there wasn't too much this build. Again, it was a speed build, speed paint. So Pegasus Hobbies, this, these ruins are awesome. Well, here it is guys, all painted up, ready to go on the gaming table. I think it looks great, a lot of conversions on, really meshes well with the 40K terrain that we have. Alrighty, so if y'all like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.